One thing that may not have made a whole lot of sense to you is the fact that we always said create procedure, procedure name, open paren, close paren. Why do we need that? Well, you can have input parameters and output parameters inside those parens. And we're going to get a chance to see that right here. Now take a look at this and I'll explain something, a little caveat a little bit later here. We create procedure, we give it a name, open paren, we're calling this an input parameter, we called it var1. It is an integer data type as you can see here. Now we can begin and say delete from customer table where customer number is equal to var1. When we call our procedure, call pass input procedure, we there give it the actual customer number that we're going to want to work with. That's how you pass in a variable. In a sense, you're almost setting it when you call the procedure. Now, here's that little caveat I was telling you about. You cannot change that input parameter once it comes in. You can't add one to it. So make sure you understand. No problem. The beauty of this is you can pass input parameters each time you call it. So you create the procedure once. It works for you a million times. But don't think that you can get inside that procedure and make any changes to that value because you cannot. We're going to create a stored procedure that has three parameters passed to it. Before we even go to the stored procedure, let's call it and show it how it's going to be called. Look down here in example two where I say call test proc one comma two comma MSG message. That's how I'm going to call this. So this procedure is expecting three input or output parameters. Now look at the actual procedure here. I'm creating the procedure test proc open paren. I've got one input parameter and it's called var1. Then I've got a second input parameter called var2. Then I've got an out parameter called message. Now, if you don't specifically stay in, you can leave that off. It defaults to in, but you got to specifically state out. So now we've got two input parameters and one output parameter. Let's start the procedure. We're going to begin and we have of course our end statement at the end. Now we've got a case statement. You got to be careful when you write these things by hand because there's a lot more semicolons in the stored procedure. So I'm going to give you some great examples really focus on the semicolons because if you miss them it's not going to compile correctly. Here we go we say case at the end of the case we have end case semicolon in between when var1 equals var2 then set message that output parameter they are equal semicolon when var1 is less than var2 then set message we're talking about the output parameter, variable one less, else variable one greater. Now, we'll compile this and each time we run this, we'll put our input variables in. The case statement will take effect and it'll deliver an output message. Now, what's really interesting here that really surprised me is when I call the stored procedure, of course I've got to give it the input parameter. I gave it a 1 this time. And then I gave it a second parameter. I gave it a 2. But you always have to put something when you call it in the output parameter. I usually call it the same thing. I called it message. But you could have called it Terra Tom and it's still going to run. But I have to have those three parameters in there when I call it. The greatest gift of all that you can give yourself and your company is the gift of the Nexus Query Chameleon, the query tool of the future. Hi, this is Tom Coffing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you are kept up to date on all our videos.